Hi everyone, this is June Blender from Sapien Technologies and I'm here to demonstrate one of my favorite features of PowerShell Studio, the Function Builder. The syntax of PowerShell functions, especially advanced functions, is pretty complex. Do you remember the syntax for a default parameter set or output type attributes? Or even where the square brackets, parentheses and braces go in the validate script attribute? Of course, you can look them up in help, or just type what you think is correct and troubleshoot it. But I think it's best to forget about the syntax and concentrate on the accuracy and usability of my functions. And that's where the function builder comes in. Let me show you how to use it. We'll cancel out of here and start with a blank script. I'll right click, click insert new function, and up comes the function builder. Let's write a little get widget function. The verb is get, and you can see that there's a handy drop down box that lists the Windows PowerShell approved verbs, so I don't even need to consult the get verb commandlet. The noun is widget, and let's begin with a path parameter. The name is path, it takes a string value. It's position 1 and mandatory. Click its little edit box. Because it's a path, I want to validate it. So I'll click and add a validate script attribute. Let's just use test path, keep it simple. The alias is PS path. Because it's mandatory, it doesn't have a default value, but I want users to be able to pass paths through the pipeline, so I'll set the value from pipeline attribute to true, and click OK. I want to verify that the commandlet binding attribute is enabled, because I want to create an advanced function with the Windows PowerShell common parameters. Great, let's see how far we've gotten. I'll click OK. And you'll see that the function builder has created my get widget function for me. It's added the path parameter with the parameter attributes that I specified. Here's my validate script attribute and alias attribute. And because I set value from pipeline to true, the function builder has even added begin, process, and end blocks so that I handle the pipeline input correctly. Great start. Oh, wait. I wanted this position to be zero. Let me change it. Okay, let's keep working. This time I'll right click inside of my function and instead of clicking insert new function, I'll click edit function. This feature is available anytime I click inside of a valid Windows PowerShell function. The edit function feature parses my function and adds it to the function builder, so I don't need to begin again. You'll notice that it picked up the change to that position value, so it's not just recalling what it had before, it's actually reparsing my function whenever I click edit function. Okay, let's continue. I'll add an ID parameter that takes an integer, a 32-bit integer, and click its little edit box at a default value of 0, at an error log parameter that's a switch, and I want the path and ID parameters to be exclusive. So I'll create a pr separate parameter set for each. Now here you notice that I'm not thinking about syntax, I'm thinking about the usability of my function. So let's go up to the parameter sets box I'll add a path set that returns a PS custom object and an ID set that returns a string. I'll assign the path parameter to the path set, assign the ID parameter to the ID set, and because I want the error log parameter to be a member of both sets, I'll leave its parameter set field blank. Now I'll go up and verify that the path set is my default parameter set. I could set it to ID set, but 
I want the path set to be the default. Click OK. And you'll see that the function builder has created that default parameter set for me and set it to path set. It's added the path parameter to the path set parameter set and the ID parameter to the ID set parameter set and it's left the error log parameter blank so that it's a member of both sets. Just a little more polishing. Right click, click Edit Function. And the Function Builder even allows me to write help. Let's write Synopsis gets the widgets on the local system. I can write a description too, but let me show you how to write help for a parameter. Click the Parameter Edit box and here's my description field specifies the path to the widgets on the local system. Click OK and OK again. And the function builder has added valid comment based help for my function with correctly named and spelled comment based keywords including comment based keywords for my path ID and error log parameters. It's even grabbed my output type and created an outputs comment keyword. Now I can start writing my function and adding examples to my help. I like the function builder so much that I would really also like to use it for script parameters. I can. Let's come to the top of my script, right click, and click edit script parameters. Here's the parameter builder. I bet it looks familiar because it's almost identical to the function builder. It's grabbed the name of my script, but other than that, it's almost identical. And I can use the same techniques to add valid script parameters the same way I did with my function parameters. So that's the function builder and the parameter builder in PowerShell Studio. I really like them, I really use them, and I hope you like them too. Thanks for listening.